We're joined now by the Director of Women in Global Health, Rupa Dat. Rupa, thank you for joining us. So Rupa, first off, let's start with what is Women in Global Health and uh, why is there a need for an organization like yours to advocate for gender equality in global health? Great, well thank you for having us um, and having me here today. Uh, so Women in Global Health, uh, we are a global movement uh, striving to achieve gender equality. Uh, our members come from diverse backgrounds, all genders, and we really feel that regardless of one's background and gender, that everyone should have the right and ability to attain leadership and participate in um, all ways. Uh, so Women Global Health, we were founded in the spring of 2015 um, by a group of early career women. Uh, all of us were from different backgrounds and were asking similar questions about um, there's so much talented women in, in global health, but why are we not seeing them at center stage? Uh, why are they not in policy-making forums, and uh, what can we do about it? So it seems the big question is, what are you doing about it, right? So what initiatives are you currently involved in? So Women in Global Health, in our first year, we really focused on increasing awareness. So some of the campaigns um, that we did were bringing uh, visibility to women leaders, uh, increasing just uh, the knowledge in the global health community about the gender ratios, like this data is not very existing out there. So this year what we decided to do is continue to still increase awareness on the fact that there is a gender disparity in leadership. Um, and we're also focusing on doing a bit more uh, capacity building events. Um, so this year through the Women Leaders in Global Health Initiative, uh, we're gonna be uh, bringing activities to the World Health Assembly. Last year we hosted the first ever Women Leaders in Global Health Dinner, which brought together 40 women leaders as well as some emerging uh, women leaders from around the world to talk about their own experiences and how they can advance and support uh, women's leadership. Uh, we're gonna be definitely doing that this year. So. Uh, can't give away too many surprises, but we're hoping to make this a larger event uh, and showcasing more of the talent. Uh, the second thing that I really want everyone to be aware about is uh, we are linking up with Stanford University, their Center in Innovation and Global Health, um, to launch the first ever Women Leaders in Global Health Conference. This will be taking place in October 2017. Uh, bringing together different sectors, but also a special emphasis on bringing um, women and men from lower middle income countries uh, to Palo Alto, Stanford to talk about this topic um, and really create a space for people to connect and um, ideally serve as a future hub. And then um, finally, for this particular week, the ca campaign we're launching is a call to action uh, on gender equality and global health. And our first area of focus is uh, the WHO. We're asking uh, governing bodies and the WHO executive board to really take political leadership, um, set the standards that uh, at WHO at the very top levels, um, highest ranks, we do have gender parity in leadership. Um, we've seen the UN uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres already make that commitment and deliver upon it. We also hope that the WHO, uh, with all its events and activities, um, will strive for gender parity in panels. Uh, last year, there were several all-male panels that happened officially at the World Health Assembly, and we just uh, think it's time to change that culture, and other UN agencies have started doing that. Uh, and the global health community has demonstrated a strong commitment to health issues. So let's uh, see that play when it comes to leadership as well. No, well, I couldn't agree more. And speaking of leadership, right, it's 2017. We have a new presidency about to begin. Are you optimistic about moving forward the agenda of women and gender equality and global health? How do you feel about that? Yeah, so uh, 2017 is uh, definitely going to be a very interesting time period. Um, global health community is, uh, I think there's a lot of dialogue that's happening, um, many people that are nervous, um, especially given the fact that the United States is a uh, large contributor. Um, the, the United States also uh, gives a um, significant amount of funding, but also is, has had a lot of leadership in the last um, few years, especially with um, the various U.S. presidents committed to global health. So while we can't really say for sure um, what the one person's agenda or one president's legacy is really going to be in global health for uh, women in global health, we've already started to see that there's political leadership in other parts of the world. We hope the United States will also continue to be in that leadership uh, committing to gender equality and women's empowerment. Uh, but we see that this is a time period where 
Um, even prime ministers uh, such as Justin Trudeau from Canada calls himself a feminist, so it's great to see men embracing uh, feministic uh, leadership. Uh, we've seen the UN Secretary General Antonio, uh, Antonio Guterres also make similar commitments. And um, this week, as Davos is happening, there's been a strong presence of the global health community there, but we've also seen uh, gender equality being something that companies, the private sector, want to um, take forward for better business, uh, but just overall growth and development. So I think that 2017 is uh, going to shake up things for sure. And for gender equality, we will definitely see a lot more leadership. Well, it's definitely an important and uh, topical issue these days. So thank you so much for your time. Um, that was Rupa Dutt, the Director of Women in Global Health. Thanks, Rupa. Thank you, too.